Hello, in this video we're going to talk about two main concepts in the field of hypothesis testing, and that is the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So here are some common definitions that are used to sort of describe what they are. So a null hypothesis is typically a default claim that is believed by people but has not been proven to be true. Uh, this later part of this definition, namely the part where it says, you know, we haven't proven this to be true, is usually assumed because if it has already been proven to be true, you usually won't be testing against this hypothesis anyway, because it's not really a hypothesis, it's usually at that point a fact already. Um, but if you, for example, think that this fact uh, that has been proven is not really a fact, uh, then you may, you know, think it is a hypothesis, uh, and this process again repeats. And the alternative hypothesis is usually a complementary claim, uh, but it doesn't have to be the full complement, namely the just opposite of what the null hypothesis says. It could be a sub complement, like a more specific uh, result that is uh, different from the null hypothesis, or maybe even a refined version of the null hypothesis. Uh, and this is usually used in a test in an attempt to disprove uh, the null hypothesis. Um, so as an example, uh, let us assume the null hypothesis uh, for the uh, mean of heights uh, for a set of people in the classroom is equal to uh, 173.2 centimeters. So this will be the null hypothesis. And some people usually abbreviate this by H with a subscript uh, O or zero. And that is the null hypothesis. So somebody comes up to you and says, oh, I believe that the mean of the heights of all the people in this room is 173.2 centimeters. And you turn around and you're like, okay, well, I don't quite believe you. I might think that, you know, the mean is something else, right? That's the easiest thing that you could say. Or you could say that the mean is bigger than 173.2, or you could say the mean is 180 cm, something a little bit more specific. So these will be examples of alternative hypotheses. Uh, so the most common one uh, for the alternative, which is usually abbreviated by H subscript A for alternative, is that the mean heights is not equal to 173.2 centimeters. And this is typically the easiest to prove, if you can prove that anyway. Now, some other things that are a little bit more uh, harder to prove, but ne necessarily uh, they could be actually the truth. We don't know. Uh, you could actually say that I believe that the mean is going to be bigger than 173.2 centimeters. Or somebody else could say, well, I believe uh, that the mean is less than or equal to 173.2 centimeters. Um, and these would be, you know, pretty much on the same level on uh, proving difficulty. So you could call these moderate. Now, which one is more harder to prove, the equality or the inequality? Uh, well, the equality includes one more point, so you may think that's a little bit more easier to prove uh, because you have more values to sort of uh, lie around. Uh, and a more uh, difficult claim or alternative hypothesis is that you believe that the mean heights is equal to exactly 175. Uh, so this is probably the more difficult uh, to prove because uh, if you go out and get a sample and one of your values is not 175 then you're gonna have a little bit of issues trying to prove this scenario. And there's several more different alternative hypotheses that one could pose here. Uh, so let's talk about a couple uh, more examples of uh, null and alternative hypotheses. So example two. Uh, let's assume we want to talk about the average life of some animal. Uh, let's assume the average life of cats. Uh, so let us assume one of your friends comes up to you and be like, you know what, uh, for a particular breed of cats, I believe that the average life of that breed of cat is going to be 6.2 years. So this would be a null hypothesis. So what is going to be some alternative hypotheses that you could uh, test against this? Well, you could say, let's see, 
the easiest case for an alternative hypothesis is says, you know what, I don't think you are right at all, but I do know that it's not going to be equal to 6.2 years. So that would be the easiest alternative that you could choose. One could turn around and say, okay, you know what, I think that the average life of cats is going to be larger uh, than 6.2 years. So that would be another choice. Another choice for an alternative hypothesis, you know what, I actually believe that the mean is somewhere in between 7 and 8 years. Uh, and you could even include those boundaries if you want. Um, so these would be some possible alternative hypotheses uh, that you could do for this type of uh, null hypothesis if you want to test against it. Another type of uh, null and alternative hypothesis series is when you start try to compare different sets. Uh, so let us assume the average satisfaction of companies A and B are about the same. So that would be the claim, right? So this is the null hypothesis. Uh, so let's put this in a more mathematical uh, notation. Uh, so let us assume the average satisfaction is going to be mu. And we have two different companies, A and B. So I'm going to say mu A is going to be the one for company A and mu B is the company for B. So the null hypothesis states the average for these values are about the same. So mu A and mu B are about the same. You can use approximately equal to or equal to depending on how picky you want to really go at this. Uh, so what could be an alternative hypothesis for this? Well, an alternative, uh, the easiest one of course, is saying that mu A is not equal to or not approximately equal to mu B. Now this is not the only way you can sort of think about this statement because you can look at these statements uh, from a different angle because we can subtract mu b from both sides. So we can look at this and say, okay, mu a minus mu b uh, does not or is equal to zero. Forcing the same equivalent alternative hypothesis is that mu a minus mu b is not equal to zero. And there are many reasons why you would want to uh, do such a thing, but and we'll discuss these uh, in the future videos. So what are some other alternative hypotheses you could use besides uh, this easiest one? So you could say, for an alternative, you could say that mu a minus mu b is greater than zero. You could also say that mu a minus mu b is less than zero. Or you could be a little bit more specific here. So when you say these two alternatives, what are you trying to prove? So if mu a minus mu b is greater than zero, that means mu a must be greater than mu b. And similarly here, this means mu a is less than mu b. So if you're trying to prove this alternative statement, you're trying to prove that a is better than b. And if you're trying to prove this other statement, this means you're trying to prove that B is better than A. And you could say, you know, better by some significant margin, like this difference is equal to, say, 5 or 6 or 10 or some other particular number. Like, you could really be very specific with these, but of course the more specific you get, the higher the difficulty is to prove such a thing. Uh, so that's why usually people, when they choose a alternative hypothesis to sort of test with, uh, they usually stay within these types of categories. But that's pretty much the basics and the foundations of being told a particular null hypothesis and determining what type of alternative hypothesis you want to use in your hypothesis test.